friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today is going to be a simple vlog um, discussing something. That, this is a video I've wanted to do a few times, and frankly, out of embarrassment, uh, I just haven't because it's something that I have. A, it's my Achilles heel as a gamer. But at the same time, I'm finding out that I'm not the only one that feels <laughs> the way I do when it comes to backlogs in games. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's because I went without a, <clears throat> a gaming console for you know my entire youth. And it wasn't until I was 27 years old by the time I got my first Commodore 64 and then went crazy. And I had to immediately have not just one game, I had to have multiple games because it was a cornucopia of experiences. And I like the, to be able, almost like going to an all-you-can-eat buffet. You can have a little bit of everything and eat what you want when you want to eat it. And that's why I love having a game collection. The downside is that... Uh, I, I basically cut myself short because I'm not getting the full benefit of many full experiences. Um, I, in fact, yesterday was the first day that I've actually had uh, to play Mad Max. I've been working on my new website for days, going through tons of photos and photos within my old backups of other computers and stuff and organizing pictures. So <clears throat> I've had a lot of gaming stuff on my mind and I just did a thing on my uh, 22 Xbox 360 games because uh, I've had so many requests for that for a part two. And I, finally got around to doing it, but uh, I love this Mad Max game. I've had so much fun playing it. This is the fourth time I've tried to get through this game. I have well over 200 hours. Now I've got like 220 hours in the game. I'm on my fourth attempt to get through it. I've only gotten through 60% of it. Now I can go back to my last save file and pick up where I left off and certainly finish the game, and I saved that save file just in case I, in case I choose to do that, but I actually kind of missed the grind going back to the beginning when you're underpowered with Max and your car and getting through the whole thing all over again. It was very much the same with Fallout 4. I got 142 hours in that uh, with virtually half of the story. I got like 40-50% of the main story missions uh, left because I was going nuts with the side quest and I exploration. I had to turn over every rock and see what's out there in that world. And, so it, it, this is something, um, and I, you'll hear the same thing. Oh, I have you know ADD or I have ADHD or whatever. I don't. I'm not into the labels. Oh, I'm OCD. I'm this. I'm that. Uh, we've had these problems since the beginning of mankind. I mean, back in the '60s, long before there was an uh, you know OCD and ADD and all these other things, uh, my friends and I all suffered from these same problems. So I don't think that anyone's in a special category that. They're, like there's a reason why they don't finish games. I think that uh, the backlog of especially lengthy RPG type games or lengthy video games, whether it's a Grand Theft Auto V or a Mad Max or <clears throat> Shadows of Mordor, whatever the game is, uh, there's reasons why we either complete them or we don't complete them. And right off the bat you think, well obviously if you didn't finish Mad Max it's because he doesn't like it. Well it's not because I don't like it. Uh, it's, and I think that part of it could be that maybe when everything's new and you're exploring, it's so exciting. And then kind of once you've done the heavy grinding and you've found every scrap location and you've beaten like every arena, enemy, stronghold, and camp, it loses some of its charm because there's like nothing left to do. Okay, well, it's like now I can go back to the main story, but now I've leveled my guy up so much, it's like effortless to get through the wade through the enemies or even to take down the convoys is like ridiculously simple. Uh, and this is part of the problem with these giant open world games is that you can level up to such a degree that you can really make your time easier. So it's, a, it's like a double-edged sword. So I, I, I'd be really interested to, to know, and I don't think there's really any definitive facts out there, how many people finish complete games and how many people don't. Now, I have a good friend of mine, you know, uh, Mike, He's got the um, uh, uh, Sega CD Universe, uh, code name is Vampire Mike, and uh, I've been friends with him for about a year now, and, and recently I see that he's a type where he sits through and he plays most of his games all the way through. And I like that, I respect that, I, I wish I could do that myself. I have my nephew, Christopher, he's an avid gamer, this guy is fanatical about these games. Now he played Mad Max and he's played you know the Tomb Raider many of these games. I give him a lot of games when I got the new definitive edition Tomb Raider for the PlayStation 4 I gave him my Xbox 360 and he sits through 
he puts every game on hard, right off the bat, just cranks the hardest difficulty, and he lovingly sits through. He won't look at any other game. He doesn't want to see any other game as coffee table. If you give him another game, he'll thank you for it, and he puts it away. He won't even open it up until he's done with the one game. And then he finishes it, and he, you know, he usually will tell me, hey, Uncle Dean, I finished the Tomb Raider. I loved it. It was an outstanding game. And naturally, you know, he finishes them on hard, too, which, I mean, he played the 2009 Wolfenstein uh, reboot I got him. And he put it on the hardest level of the four difficulty levels, the uber level or whatever, and he beat it. I was envious. I'm like, dude, I had a hard enough time beating those boss battles on the default setting. That's, you know, commendable. So not only does he finish the games, but he puts them on hard. So everyone's different. I have other friends that put every game on easy. They say, well, I, I just, I'm into more of the cinematic experience. I don't like too much of a challenge. And, and that's one of the beauties of why they're making games like Hitman Absolution, where there's many different ways you can play it. Some of the newer Splinter Cell games, the same thing can go in and tailor and make the experience to be, to make it more of an old school Hitman, uh, you know, game or old school Splinter Cell game, really difficult or you can make it more of an action-based adventure. So I think that the games are, are being made to such a degree that we have the options to play them as we like. I've mentioned the, you know, the new Twisted Metal uh, reboot that came out in 2011 or 12 or whatever it was uh, for the PlayStation 3. Now, I didn't care for the story mode. I only got a couple story chapters into that game. But what I have played a tremendous amount of, probably 60-odd hours, is the challenge mode, where I can go in and pick uh, the arenas, the sections which are in the story mode, pick out the enemies I like to load out, uh, everything, all the challenges. You can put a ton of enemies on the screen, or just a few, it's up to you. And I play those levels all the way through. It may take me 15 minutes, it may take me 30 minutes, depending on how I have it set up. Those are the games that, <clears throat> that I kind of gravitate towards uh, because they're fun to play. It's like, you know, a Forza game. You can go in and just play a couple of races, you can complete that race, which takes five minutes or ten minutes, whatever it is, and after you've done a few races, you kind of get your fill and you can shut the thing off and you feel good. You've achieved something. You've slowly worked your way up uh, as you've checked off the boxes. Okay, I've done all these challenges. I've done all of these races over here or whatever. And I think that's great, but sometimes these giant open world games like The Witcher, which, you know, I'm not really into the medieval period and horses and swords and all that, but I have many friends that love that game. Uh, as well as Skyrim, and you can see that you could sink, you know, 100 or 200 hours with ease into those games because they give you so much value. The problem is, is that, like I said, it's like a two-edged sword. They give you so much that it's almost overwhelming. Sometimes uh, I, I feel overwhelmed that I don't know where it's like, God, I don't know where to begin. I, will I ever get through the story? Now, GTA V, I sat down. It took me a couple weeks to get through it because along the way I was finding all the collectibles and trying to level up and what have you. But I kept returning to the story because the story and the characters were so good. Same thing with Mafia 2. Same thing with L.A. Noir uh, and many other bigger games. Uh, the older GTA 3 and Vice City I played. I just saw uh, my friend Dave Wade just posted some gameplay of GTA San Andreas this morning from the PlayStation 2, and I was looking at that, I'm like, you know, I never finished that game, why is it? And I bet I have at least, at least 100 hours or more in that game, easily. I still have my memory uh, card, PS2 memory card, which has my save file where I unlocked the second land mass or the San Francisco, you know, uh, area. I never unlocked the third one that has the Las Vegas and the desert and all that. Although I enjoyed flying over it and dropping in, commandeering a car and seeing how long I could outlast the cops at five stars or whatever. But I said, why didn't I finish that? That was one of the first big games that I, I chose not to finish. And I couldn't understand why. And Grand Theft Auto 4 as well. I'm 60% or more through that story, 60-70% into that. I love the missions. I, I love the graphics. I was having so much fun in that world. What happened? And I think that with that one, I can clearly say that I get sidetracked with San Andreas and with Grand Theft Auto 4. You've got to work out. You've got to go to Burger King and eat so many burgers and stay in shape. And I get sidetracked. It, it, I became immobilized with too many uh, multitasking choices I had to make. I, I don't like games that are overtly um, rich with, with options to where you become virtually immobilized. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to advance at that point. 
Um, and that's what kind of intimidated me about the Fallout 3 game initially, is I got this giant one-inch thick strategy guide. I'm like, my God, there's so much to this game. I mean, am I picking the right attributes? Am I picking the right perks? You know, I want to <clears throat> make this character good. And I became immobilized by my own worry about playing the game right. I'm like, you know, the hell with it. I just should just play the damn thing. So when Fallout 4 came out, I said, fuck it, I'm just going to play it. I'm sure, you know, the new ones especially have a tutorial built in. And I just trusted my instincts and went through the game, and I'm glad I did. It wasn't elated with a lot of the crafting, settlement crafting and stuff like that. But it was fun, and I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the characters and the side quests and how it all fit together. I love just the random exploration that made Fallout 4 so fantastic. That's worth putting over 100 hours or more. <clears throat> so, you know, typically I'll do these little rants. I'll pick out a handful of games and I'll kind of show the box and talk about it. But <clears throat> this is one category I'd have to pull out, you know, 80% uh, of my game room and have it in here. And I, I don't want to turn this into a two and a half hour vlog. <clears throat> so I'll just mention a few of these games. Like I watched, I mean, I was looking at uh, my Twitter this morning and um, one of the <clears throat> major game sites, uh, I forget what it's called, begins with a K, um, did a thing about Rage, the Rage game from id Software. <clears throat> and that... Uh, the guy just recently, you know, picked the game up and played it and didn't think much of it initially, but this time he really saw it for what it was and all the great things that it did. What an outstanding game. I couldn't put it down, all this stuff. And looking back on it, it's a great game. I'm looking back on that one, a game that I loved. And I did all the side quests. I did the extra DLC sewer missions, everything in that game. And I never finished that. Now, that game, I'm 75% of the way through. <clears throat> and unlocked the second big landmass and was real, and I, you know, RPG'd up the hell out of my character and all the weapons and guns and ammo was little spider bots and great weapons I had built for that game. And for some reason, I never finished it. I, I, I don't know why. Although I have watched a complete walkthrough of that entire game. Maybe that's it. Maybe because I've seen the end of the game, the same thing with Fallout 4. I actually, you know, I was home uh, suffering with my back and couldn't play games for quite a while. So I sat down and watched a complete Let's Play of, you know, I've done it with Dead Island 2 and a, f a few games. Not, not too many games that I could sit and invest, in, you know, hours and hours to watch an entire game, but a few of them I have just because I'm curious to see how other people, how they make uh, the choices that they make, why do they, you know, make those choices, and seeing how the story plays out, you know, if you pick this character or choose this faction or that. So for that reason alone, <clears throat> certain games I can see taking the time and watching a playthrough, a Let's Play. But, my God, I mean, I got a huge list. I mean, there's Rage. I mean, I never finished. What an outstanding game. Hitman Absolution, which I have reviewed and played quite a bit of. I never finished that one. I think I have a couple missions left in that. Uh, these are all great games. All games that I look at very highly. And it's like, why do I feel bad that I haven't finished it? Far Cry 3, another outstanding game, which I also one of the very first games. I think it was the first game that I reviewed on my channel in 2012, I never even finished that story. That one I purposely don't want to see any playthroughs because I the story was so good I still want to be surprised. Same thing with the Bioshock Infinite, another game that I'm about halfway through and never finished it. So those I purposely don't want to know how it came out or the story because I know the story was the centerpiece of those games and I, I don't want to spoil it for myself but <clears throat> there's so many great experiences. And I'm thinking about that now. I could go out today and get this Bioshock collection. I don't really have the money right now, but it's very, very tempting. I even thought of taking my, <laughs> my Mankind Divided Deus Ex game and trading it in towards it. And it's like, well, I had those games here just recently. I had Bioshock Infinite, the Xbox 360. They had the brand new Rapture Edition with Bioshock 1 and 2 sitting on my shelf, uh, you know, with all the DLC, and I, and I never played them. So I... I you know, I, I'm impulsive. Naturally, it's nice to have all the new games, you know, and I, and I want to. I have the Mafia 3. I've got pre-ordered. You know, even after I swore up and down, I'm not going to pre-order any more games. What I think I'm going to do is I'm not going to pre-order uh, 
as many games as I used to. I pre-ordered everything on site, sight unseen. I just trusted in the dev. I thought I was supporting the dev. Plus, I wanted to get the extra weapons and cars and uh, DLC missions and stuff like that by usually pre-ordering the game. They usually give you some incentive. Um, not with every game, but with, with a lot of them. And I like the car packs and weapon packs in Mafia 2. And I know I like the game so much, like I did Mafia 2, which I did play all the way through, including a lot of the DLC missions. Um, and the same thing with L.A. War that I wanted to support uh, this, you know, Hangar 10 Studios and, and uh, this their, their effort by pre-ordering the game. I even got it with this, the deluxe edition. They'll have the season pass because I know I'll enjoy the added missions and races and all that kind of stuff that comes with that game. So I, I, I'm going to pre-order a couple games. I pre-ordered The Rise of the Tomb Raider because it has so many glowing reviews and a couple of good friends of mine, that, oh, Dean, the game is amazing, great graphics, you'll really enjoy it. And I know it'll look great on the PlayStation 4. And I'm very anxious to get that PS4 Pro down the road, which I'll probably have even better performance and a little bit you know, better frame rates than some of these games, which would be awesome. But uh, <clears throat> there's so many games to buy that are coming out. Uh, even with my very selective taste in games and genres, there's still, I mean, more games than I can afford to buy. And I've got so many old experiences just sitting there. So every time I walk into my game room, one of the first emotions I feel, uh, along with being proud of having all the games in my collection, is I can't help but feel a sense of guilt looking at all these games staring me in the face like, why the hell didn't you finish me? Spec Ops The Line, I just raved about in my, my favorite, you know, Xbox 360 games uh, video I just did yesterday. Never finished it. Great story. Now, that's another game that I've actually seen the entire playthrough, including all the different choices you can make at the end, because I was curious to see how it all played out. Maybe that's why, as I spoiled it for myself by watching the playthrough, but it's a great game. And, and I can honestly see myself going back and playing the game. I could see myself finishing Hitman Absolution, certainly finishing Far Cry 3 and 4, which I haven't finished either. Both of those games I have exactly 35 hours in and then stop playing. I don't know why. I explored so much. I leveled up my, my guys. I made all the holsters. I did all this stuff in Far Cry 4 and 3, but I just never finished them. And I, I don't really know what the reason is. It's, I think part of it is that you can almost reach a burnout playing those games every single day, like a Far Cry 4. The minute I came home from work, that's the first thing I put in. And I would just drive around and do and just do the hunting quest and level up and make all of the leather holsters to carry more weapons. I've already kind of maxed my dude out. And I and I found like every area on the whole southern map, you know, especially. It's like there was like nothing left to do. And I think I just got I reached a, a sensation of burnout and boredom with the game. But yet, like I said, you know, GTA V, I have over hundred hours in that. I played that all the way through and then continued to play it to the scour, and I found every collectible with the submarine, all the little hidden packages and things around in the environments, and I started doing like the little quests flying under all of the bridges and everything. <clears throat> I'm kind of a completionist, but at the same time, I, you, you can become immobilized by being a completionist because it's like this Mad Max game. I'm trying to check off on the list every single challenge and so I can 100% the game, but you can <laughs> miss the forest of the trees and I think ruin some of that immersion and story elements because you're too busy trying to, you know, complete this list that someone put together for you to try to go through with the, quote, busy work, as Jim Sterling calls it, which uh, I like busy work. I frankly like all of the questing and all the exploration and looting in a game like this. I think it's a tremendous amount of fun. I don't see it is a negative thing. It's funny because I can sit and, and, you know, with TV shows, like I'm on the last season of Mannix right now, I can sit and, 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 and watch an episode. Now, I could jump around. I could watch one of these and then put an old Hawaii Five O in or put a Hogan's Heroes or something else, but lately I've been just watching nothing but Mannix from season one all the way to the final season all the way through because I enjoy it. And if I don't like it, I can stop. That's why I like it. It's in, it's in episodes. So I can just finish an episode, it's only 15 minutes or so, it's easy to finish it, and if the evening's still early, I can watch another one, or maybe even another one. Uh, same thing with a movie, I can put in, you know, I've been watching my new Blu-rays of Star Wars lately, uh, and I, you know, I love the quality, I've seen this so many times, but 
uh, these are great movies I can return to, but if they're only two hours long. It's easy to sit through two hours in a film, or less than an hour or 30 minute, you know, Andy Griffith show or something. It's easy to complete. But to sit through a Fallout 4, <clears throat> you know, at 200 hours or something, it can be a little bit draining. So <clears throat> I'm just curious in the comment section, this is something I really would love to know. How are you personally about completing games? Do you complete a high percentage of them? Maybe put down a percentage. How many games, 15% do you play all the way through? Uh, I have some friends of mine that just game a lot of older retro games, and they just like a lot of the simple platformers and games you can jump in and play for a little bit and jump right out. That's understandable. Uh, but of, of the, those of you out there that like these big epic games that are story related, where you, there's definitely a, a beginning, a middle, and an end, do you see yourself playing the bulk of them all the way through, uh, or do you jump around like I do with, you know, AD, HD, or whatever, you just can't decide, like a kid in a candy store, there's just so many great options you have, you don't know what to, have, what to pick, I'm just curious. Uh, I'm envious, you know, I was playing the Battlefield Hardline, which I personally liked. A lot of people bagged on it, didn't like the game, but I was having fun with that, and I haven't finished it. And I had to sadly delete that game recently. I think I still have uh, my progress is saved in my hard drive on my PlayStation 4, but <clears throat> I'd love to get back and finish that game like I finished all my other Battlefront and Call of Duty campaigns, like Call of Duty Ghost. I sat down in like two evenings and blew through that whole campaign and loved it, and then went back through and replayed my favorite level. This way, in a way, I kind of like the shorter games that are five, six, seven hour campaigns, because at least I can finish those, uh, you know, um, Army of Two Devils Cartel, Call of War is the Cartel, those are two different games, both like seven to twelve hour campaigns that you can sit through and blow through in a couple, two, three nights, Kane and Lynch 2, those are all easy games to complete because they're short games. In some ways, I almost like them better, but at the same time, I feel magnetically drawn to these giant uh, monstrosities that also immobilize me with indecision because I'm almost too afraid to finish the games because they're so big and there's so much to do. And then part way into it, I feel guilty because all of a sudden I see one or two or three new games that are coming out or even an old game like Star Wars Jedi Outcast, you know, that I find at my game store, oh, finally I can play this. And then I hit sidetrack. That's what blew me off from uh, the Jedi Outcast. I, I would have finished that game all the way through, and then this game came out and pulled me off it. So <clears throat> these are the problems you want to have <laughs> in life. I mean, life is filled with so many challenges and problems. I got a lot of money challenges right now I'm trying to presently get through. <clears throat> I just have some new leads and jobs. I actually have a good-sized job secured by the end of the month, which will kind of <clears throat> bail me out of this uh, kind of a dry season. <clears throat> My business slows down. Right around the kids go back to school at the end of the summer. T uh, typically, the painting business will slow down. You'll get a few calls for people wanting their homes painted before Christmas and Thanksgiving, but for the most part, it's a tough period between now and uh, er in early next spring. Uh, it's fairly dry, so I have to be very selective with the games that I buy. I can't go nuts and buy, even though I want to get a new Xbox One S, and I'd love to play this new Forza Horizon 3. I'm going to have to sadly hold off, So, which is probably a good thing. It gives me a chance to finish some of these older games. So, uh, Let me know in the comments how you feel about this dynamic of this backlog. Do you have a backlog? Is it a huge one? Is it a small one? Do you feel guilty about it? Do you not care? Are you indifferent? It doesn't bother you at all, and that's just the nature of gaming to you. I, I would be curious. I know that if you want to do a VR, that's cool, too. Uh, it's an interesting topic. Uh, backlogs are a bitch. Uh, they, they really are for me. It's something that I wrestle with the guilt, but I grew up with a, a big built-in guilt complex. I've felt guilty since the beginning of time because my parents drilled that into me <laughs> at an early age. So I kind of uh, use that guilt now for little things, for why I don't finish projects or art projects or games. Uh, films, like I said, films I have no problem finishing, but I don't know what it is about these big, beefy games like Mad Max. I love them, and I would love to finish them. I don't know if I'll get through this game and finish it or not. I'm just having fun with the process. And to me, at the end of the day, 
That's what gaming's all about. As long as you're having fun in that process, in that world, whether you take it out and then that night put in another game. Some people jump around within one day on a game. I typically won't. I'll put a game in for a week or a couple weeks at least, and then I'll pull it out and then maybe put something else in. Usually a racing game. I deviate, uh, jump back and forth between FPS and third-person shooters, and then I'll play a racing game or a snowboarding game just for a while, for a week or so, and then I jump back into my shooters in story-driven games, which I love. But <clears throat> Uh, anyway, it's an interesting topic. Uh, let me know in the comments how you feel about it one way or the other. And um, <clears throat> what can I say? I don't know that I'll ever get the backlog done. In some ways, I'm relieved that a lot of the newer games aren't meeting my criteria because I, the backlog is just getting larger and larger by the day and month. It's amazing how big it's gotten. <clears throat> and even if I never bought another new game, I still have decades of wonderful, rich experiences that I've yet to enjoy that I have right in my game room and the other side of my house here. So, anyway, that's my <clears throat> winded rant on, uh, you know, backlogs. Let me know how you feel about backlogs. Do they bother you? Do they not bother you? Uh, it's all good at the end of the day, and I appreciate your input in the comments. I really do. Uh, thanks for watching, my friends, and no matter what, enjoy your gaming.